Welcome to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? With your host, Louisa Barton. I want to be a famous rider. I should like to race. Presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. Who says I help horses with people problems? Now here's the Brit on the bit, Louisa Barton! Yeah, baby! Yeah! The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa and our television broadcast sponsor. Welcome to the Horse Talk Show presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Louisa Barton here in the CEP studios in downtown Ocala, the horse capital of the world. Got my friend back. It's been Jake a long Newberg's time. back, yes, from Petri Ranch. It has been a long time, Jake, too long. I've been working, you've been working. I've been running around the country. You have. You've been a busy chap. Well, but I've been home for... Home. 24 hours. I know, and I snatched you up already, and now I'm making him move me. I was He's like, what? The 25th. Come on. I it, need you and your horse trailer. Put it on my calendar. <laughs> I wasn't home an hour, and Louisa I, said, I what are you doing? Come on the show. Come on the show. I need you. Look, I didn't know you pulled in. It was like an ESP thing. I, it was. It was, it was fabulous. Perfect you timing. literally pulled in the driveway. I'm like, hey, <laughs> come on. Good timing. <laughs> thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, Thanks for thank having you, me. And thank you to Stephanie for lending you to me so quickly after you got back. She came home. She's home fixing horsey fence, and Johnny's home, probably watching cartoons or playing with Legos or yeah, something. Do what little boys do. Yeah. Oh, I've got some Legos for him. He'd love them. Oh, I seriously do. Edward kind of sort of, you know, turned eighteen and grew out. Uh, yeah. So. It happens fast. It does. Too quick. Watch out. Just telling you. I'm going to start off with some news. You know that crazy plant. You know the creeping. The one. The the creeping indigo. Yes, that's a big deal. And that is a plant that has taken off, it's actually started out being a pasture legume that they thought was a good ground cover. And then it turned out to be toxic to livestock. And if you have something like this on your farm, um, it's something to get help for quickly. If you're concerned, call Marion County. They have an extension department that come out and have a look. But very recently in Hawaii, there was a problem and a, a horse fatality from it. It's very, very toxic to horses. And one of the things that's a bit tricky about it is that it tastes good. So a lot of the weeds the horses won't eat unless they absolutely have no grain, no hay, and no good grass. If they're on a dirt lot not being fed, they'll go and find a weed and it might be toxic to them. But what's bad about this one is it's delicious. And once they get a taste for it, it's actually quite addictive. Um, it has a similar sort of a flavor to alfalfa hay. It's quite, quite rich. Um, and it has a, a good taste, not a not a kind of a, a yucky, toxic taste, as a lot of the weeds are very sour, but this one's not. So it's definitely one to be really, really concerned about. And if you have something that looks like this, now there is another similar weed I've had in my field. I was concerned about had someone come and look. It's like a brother or sister to this from similar family, but it's not toxic, so don't panic. But if you do have something like this, or you think looks like this, get it checked out because it is toxic. Horses do have to eat quite a lot of it to get sick from it, yep. which is a good thing. Um, but if you have a horse that's kind of a bit of a pig, and once they get the taste for it and they get out there and eat a lot of it, you can get very, very sick. And I have several people, actually, who've had horses get sick from it that, that passed away from it, couldn't figure out what it was for the longest time that was doing it. So. Yeah, it's scary stuff. And it's like you said, it's accumulative. Like it, yeah, they can be fine and be fine, and then they're not fine. Yes, yep. and they can get deadly sick from it yep. after eating excessive amount of it so just something to be aware of and because that came up in the news it's actually a native plant to Africa um, and was actually brought to Hawaii in 1929 apparently a long time ago and it's kind of become invasive as it has in Florida and in Puerto Rico it's actually become quite invasive as well but this particular fatality was in Hawaii um, recently so it's just something made me think about it and say 
the aware. Another awareness thing that I was thinking about for our news this week was hurricane season. It's coming up. Yes. And as a horsemanship guy and a trainer and a guy that works a lot with young horses and, and, and working with problem horses, you know, one of the things that always comes to mind for me is don't start teaching your horse how to go in a horse trailer on storm day. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you don't regularly trailer your horse or if your horse hasn't been in a trailer for a long time or if your horse has never been in a trailer, now would be a really good time to start working on those things so right. that you're prepared if you did have to evacuate for any reason. You were not in the middle of a bad storm trying to teach your horse how to trailer up. Yeah, don't wait till you're late for the show. <laughs> don't wait right. till the storm is a knocking. Yes, exactly. And having that little medical kit nearby as well is a good thing because if you have a down tree that knocks down part of your fence or um, your horse gets hurt, something flying through the air, or your horse panics from the storm and runs into something, all those things are good to have a kit somewhere on hand. Having some banamine around is a good idea. Maybe even having some kind of a calming, yep. um, something like ace promazine or something like that on hand, just in case you have horses that yep. are alarmed during stormy weather. So things to look out for now that we're in hurricane season. First one just went south of us, right? That's right, yes. Yep. And actually, my daughter was in Miami for that. Unfortunately, it was nothing, and they were on the beach in the afternoon. It was just some rain. Um, but, you know, you never know. Sometimes yep. those things are worse. We're very fortunate to be as far inland and high up as we are in Ocala. I think we're very fortunate not to have two terrible storms. Once they get to us, they've usually kind of gone through everything and calmed down a little bit, but still need to be ready. And when you have horses, obviously you need to know what to do, um, whether they're better in or out is a decision you kind of have to make. Yes. Obviously, if you have a horse that's used to being a pasture horse, suddenly putting him in a stall because there's a storm coming may Doesn't not help. be your best option because <laughs> no, he's not used to it already. Yeah. Um, so those are just things to think about, but um, just this time of year makes me think about about that. So um, the Land Rover U.S. eventing um, team got the silver at uh, the FEI Eventing Nations Cup in Great Britain, and Great Britain won. Imagine that. What do you know? Home country won it. Um, but very nice. Congrats to the U.S. team in getting the silver. Well done. And a little bit of university research has proven something I've said all along. And I don't know as a trainer if you agree with this or not. But the tone of your voice matters with horses and pigs. Who knew? We've always known that it definitely affects with dogs, right? It's very right. easy. I've seen that. Yeah, I know. If the... you say to my dog, oh, hi, yes, yes. He smiles. <clears throat> the, I'd be interested to, to know more about that research because for me, a big part that you'll see is it's very easy. I've seen this demo for years, you know. He's a good horse, he's a good horse. And the horse just stands there. <laughs> right? And it doesn't really seem to be a difference. Now, I think the big part, what I encourage my um, students uh, and clients to think about is when you ch do that with your voice, you do the baby voice, that really helps change our internal energy. And that I am very confident yes. makes a big change. And so the energy that we have to do to do those kind of voices um, versus when you do the stern voice, the energy behind it really does right. make a difference. So um, we already know horses are so in tune with our energy yes. because we know if somebody's nervous, and they get on a horse, the horse will become nervous because we know there's a transfer of that energy. Exactly. So how interesting, you might be right, that the tone of voice is actually what changes our demeanor. Yes. And that energy is what the horse or pig, I don't know where the pig came into it, but the university study said that the way we speak matters and that pigs and horses can distinguish between a negative and positive voice tone. I, I think it's great that they're continuing to do these things because a big part of getting along with horses are any kind of livestock, pigs included. We have yes. a pig, Baconator. If you've yes. never seen Baconator, Baconator at Pear Tree Ranch, <laughs> she's a celebrity. Um, right. it, 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 it can really make a difference. The more you understand how they are, you have that much better interaction. So. Stirrups and Strides had an absolutely phenomenal event last week that I was able to be at, the Therapeutic Riding Center. So proud of them. They have four athletes competing. Uh, in Orlando in the Special Olympics and the final leg of the torch was carried by the law enforcement officers that have carried the torch all the way from Chicago across the country all the way here to Ocala and arrived at Stirrups and Strides to celebrate those four wonderful athletes that will be um, competing for the gold. So hats off to them and to Stirrups and Strides for an amazing good work 
that they do for uh, for our riders. That was the one Super. minute sign, which means we're down to actually 30 seconds. So we hope you'll stay with us. We're going to chat to Jake about his travels and what he's been doing and um, catch up with him and Stephanie a little bit in their adventures. And then we'll have Steve Haskin, our Hall of Famer as well. We've got Dr. Kayok coming up next for you. Stay with us on the Horse Talk Show. We'll be right back. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to FeedDAC.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. With over 70 years of collective experience in the horse industry, Lipchip was built with integrity by horsemen for horsemen. Introducing the Chip Link system, powered by Lipchip, where a 15 digit unique ID becomes a key to unlock not only identity, but also health paperwork, owner information, and even photos of each horse. So simple, even a child can do it. The future is here. The future is Lipchip. Enhance your horse's performance fitness, strength, and rehabilitation with state-of-the-art equipment. ETI treadmills offer the finest European engineering, the highest quality filtration, and no chemicals are required. Follow Equine Therapy International on social media or at equinetherapyint.com. Equine Therapy International provides technologically advanced therapy for horses worldwide. Hey, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. I'm Louisa Barton with the Horse Talk Show here at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital in Ocala, Marion County, Florida, the horse capital of the world. I have Dr. Adam Kayot, been on the show with us before, uh, sitting with me. We're going to talk about um, something close to home for me. Uh, when you should retire your horse, I say never. 
Dr. K probably doesn't agree with me. My horse is 34 and still going strong. Of course, he's in good hands. Uh, he is a patient of Peterson and Smith himself. Uh, I've had him with me for 26 years, and he still likes to go about five or six miles on the beach or the trail. Dr. K thoughts on when you should retire your horse? Well, it's a difficult situ you know, it's a difficult subject, and it can be a you know a touchy subject depending on the owner, um, because some people you know have a hard time of letting go. Excuse me, letting go of, um, you know, their their buddy, right? Then their friend and their companion, and what they used to do, and what they would do, you know, with the horse and that sort of thing. It's very individualized per horse um you know obviously you have a 34 year old that still goes five six miles a day and you know and and a lot of that has to do with number one just genetic makeup of the horse number two how a 34 year old a 34 year old horse is not the same across the board some 34 year olds don't have as much miles on the tires as you know others and that plays a certain role and um so so those are things that you should think of um i tend to when people ask me that question is it time to retire my horse i look at number one what was the horse doing you know i had i looked at a polo pony yesterday and polo pony was 18 and those guys have a tough life. That's a hard job. That's that's a that's a hard, stressful job on the on the horse's legs, and and there aren't many polo ponies that make it to 34 years old. You know, plain, not any probably. And and this this particular one was 18 years old, and you know had a had a had a bad suspensory in the front leg and a a, a, a torn superficial flexor tendon in in the in the back leg. And, you know, at that point, you kind of say, okay, is this worth going on with the horse? And, and these owners are very responsible owners and they want to do what's best for the, you know, um, the re even though the, the, the pony was a, a good plain pony, um, you know, she decided that this is the time. And, and I agreed with her because when things start breaking, they just continue to break that sort of thing. So that kind of comes into, into play. I think, I think if, if you're trying to perform with this animal and stuff continue, continues to go wrong, they're having injuries and that are occurring more frequently, um, and uh, doing what they have always done, then you need to, you need to seriously consider, am I being fair? You know, and, and, and that can be a very difficult, you know, a difficult question to ask yourself because, you know, everybody can be a little selfish at some points and they want to, you know, they want to continue the good times and, 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 and everything that they've had with their friends. So, um, it, it makes it hard, but when people come to me and ask those questions, I try to, um, take take as much as the whole picture into account as I can and say well let's see what's happening here what problems are we having are these problems reoccurring and are they reoccurring because this horse is not able to do his job anymore now a question for example I have another older horse who's 27 and he hasn't been ridden very much in the last year actually I texted you about him the other day um, and he's been getting down on the ground and having trouble getting back up and I think some of that may be due to loss of muscle tone in his rear end because he seems weaker in the rear end from not being ridden very much is it really important with an older horse especially if you're retiring it from sort of a major job where it's been ridden quite a lot which is obviously keeping its you know keeping it strong and fit is it important then if you do retire a horse from a sport to not just let that horse be turned out and go and is it important to keep up some form of exercise in order to keep that horse fit and keep some muscle tone to help it age and retire at least and, and still be healthy absolutely you know it's just like it's just like people you know um the fitness is is great for people and it's great for your equine athletes and 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 if you can maintain some level of of fitness, um, the the rest of their life, it does prolong their ability to um, live a full, 
healthy, happy life. If you can, if you can exercise, it's just like, it's just like a person or an old man. If that, if that, older gentlemen can go to the gym and still keep up some muscle tone, even though they might be in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, that helps so much because then you don't have the problems of, of them getting up when they lay down or a person getting out of bed and trying to dress themselves or, you know, a horse trying to be with his buddies around. They're less likely to to get injured they're they they maintain their muscle tone and that and that's really difficult that's what we see in old horses as they deteriorate or as they age their body deteriorates their their digestive system becomes less efficient in converting calories to body mass they start losing muscle tone and and at some point it makes it very difficult to get that back or to reverse the course and, and um, you know, if, if you're continuing to lose muscle mass, then typically they, they become too heavy and they can't support their body. They can't support the skeleton. So depending on how much muscle mass you, you lose. But if you can keep them in some sort of activity, not just walking around the field, but some sort of activity, even light riding or that sort of thing, that helps. And that helps prolong, you know, the, the life of the animal and the useful life of the animal. Um, it's, uh, they don't necessarily have to be doing high goal polo their whole life, but if you just get out and, and, you know, and, um, you know, trot the horse around or get on and, and, and do, you know, light trail riding or something like that, all of that helps. I know, you know, I know there are some, some farms that, that, uh, thoroughbred farms that, they have their stallions and even though the stallion is retired from racing they still take them out and they work them daily and you know it keeps that it keeps that muscle tone it keeps them in good shape and and it would do the same same to your horse so absolutely um they don't necessarily have to be doing big grand prix jumps or anything like that take it back a notch take it down a notch put it put their exercise level into a box that they can do comfortably and if you have the ability and time to do that, that would certainly help them. So even if turned out in the field, just being able to jump on them a few times a week maybe and just keeping them going, keeping them moving just like an older person, the more you move, the less likely you're to get stiff. Um, and I find my older horses do better turned out than in the stall. They tend to get stocked up in the stall. So I think being turned out is, is often much better for older horses if possible. If you can do that, absolutely, because um, it, it just keeps the elasticity in the muscle. It keeps them, you know, it keeps the 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 they aren't just standing in one place using the same muscles over and over again while the while the other ones the activity muscles are getting neglected that sort of thing so if you're able to do that and they can be outside horses are meant to be outside that's what they're meant to be i mean that's that, that's the typical that's the best spot for them if, if they can be and so yeah Wonderful. I'm here with Dr. Adam Kayot at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. I'm Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. And Larson Hay, our broadcast and television sponsor, plus supporting sponsors, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Seminole Feed Stores, Piranha, TT Distributors and the Hilton Garden in downtown Louisville. This show is brought to you in part by Seminole Feed Stores, family owned since 1934. Manufacturing fixed formula horse feeds with mindful monitoring and quality ingredients right here in Ocala in an all natural, non medicated feed mill. Seminole Feed, simply the world's best and safest feed. Like them on Facebook now or find them at SeminoleFeed.com.
If you're tired of the rigours of keeping your horse's water troughs clean and free of algae, you need the Drinking Post Waterer, an automatic waterer for horses, livestock and cattle. Field tested for over 40 years, the Drinking Post Waterer is the gold standard of non-electric automatic waterers. Check them out on Facebook or find them on the web at dpwaterer.com. Jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the Horse Talk Show, presented by Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Have you seen the hay competitions they have on Thursdays? Oh, people win hay. Weren't we just talking about hay? Mm. We were goodies for you oh, so nice we've got the for... piranha bag and in the piranha bag there are some goodies for jake lots of goodies for you to try and then we've also got a um very nice bag here from summit joint performance of goodies for you and your horse this is the people the c4 mm. and this is the horse version in here and i believe there's a cap in here yep there is a cap it's not an embroidered cap. Uh, we won't talk about that. Um, and also from the Green Pharmacist, you get to sleep good tonight. You can have a CBD gummy. Oh, so look at that. Fine. Goodies on the show. Thank so you. Jake Bambound hasn't been on the show. Jake's from Pear Tree Ranch. How long has it been? It must be six months. At least. It's got to be, right? At least. So where have you been? So uh, we had a very busy fall and winter. Um, Usually what ends up happening, so we do horse training at home and lessons and clinics um, when I'm in town, and I'm usually home October through April. And so my wife, knowing that people usually back out at the last minute over books, and then when they back out, it's just right. Except nobody packed out. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. You must be good. So I was a real busy boy for... Um, October through April, and we also had a few clinics at the farm, and um, we hosted a two-week-long course, Train the Trainers course, with my good buddy Ryan Rose, and so we had uh, outside training horses, and then the participants that wanted to bring their own horses brought their horses, so we did training horses in the morning and their personal horses or lease horses in the afternoon, and they learned all about kind of what does it take to be a horse trainer and get that kind of coaching and support. A lot of people... Um, oh, yeah, I'm a trainer. I rode a horse once at camp. <laughs> and it's a different deal when you ride uh, a lot of different horses because you have to learn to adapt and change. And so uh, that was a great course, great experience for a lot of people. And then again, I was very busy through um, March and April. So we wrapped up our training season and clinic season, and then I've been on the road for the last uh, four weeks. And that's about half as long as I was gone last, last year. This time I did eight weeks straight. And it was uh, a very long haul. So nice that we kind of lightened it up a little bit. Good to be back home. I'm just home for four weeks. I've got a uh, full barn of training horses. And then I hit the road again in July for some more 
more work on the road. So, so you sent me some really awesome photographs. Uh, it looked like you were having a lot of fun, and I said, I want to swap lives with you. Um, tell us about some of this. This just looks like a lot of fun to me. So this is at our place in Florida here, and um, these are a couple of my young horses from our Pear Baby program. And That one looks like Flynn. It does. My Mustang. Like <laughs> yeah, that's my young mare, Rosie. She's getting uh, bred to have her first foal this month. She goes in with a stallion. And then this is in Virginia. You can see so my... She has a nice rear end. That's a nice booty right yep, there. Yeah, that is a nice booty. That's Hobie. And then you can see my dog, Sandy, helping work the cattle. So we do some um, cattle working clinics um, at our place and around the country, which is super fun. And then... I'd like to take one of those. It's super fun. You know, doing the cow working really helps give it a purpose. Um, so when I teach, I talk about there's four areas of development. you got to teach your horse confidence, yielding. That's kind of the core. And I tell people, if you have enough confidence in yielding, you can do any pattern or purpose. Like this garocha pole here. Mm. You can learn to dance, do a little pole dancing with your horse. <laughs> as long as you have enough confidence in yielding, you can learn the movements, okay? Um, but this would be considered a pattern or a purpose do, doing a job, and that's mm -hmm. the same thing with cow working. And so the cow working really tests your uh, horses and your own confidence and the, their ability to yield and follow with you. And when you have that put together, you can really go have some fun, like us kind of being silly, showing off confidence, standing up there with the whips. So, um, and this horse is? This is my good gray horse. So this is a horse that came to me uh, 10 years ago this month 10 years ago this month i had this horse in and he was a hellion he would pull back he would kick he would rear he would buck he would run you over he wouldn't go in the trailer he would all the things and um so we had him in training got going and the owner was a young girl the mom kind of really wanted to have the horse and she didn't really like the horse and we worked together to kind of get her feeling good about the deal the mom kind of he's not let her you know work to express what she was interested in and then i helped with the horse and i did a few more months of training on him in the fall time of that year to, uh, 2012 and at the end of it they're like you know that horse loves you more than loves anybody else we think you should have him and you know by that time i put a lot of time into him and we had a great bond and i said ow ow my arm stopped twisting it so <laughs> he came to live with me and this horse has traveled all over the country with me and what's his name his name is they called him little gray and the funny story with this horse is the guy they bought him from said oh his name's little gray it's um from the lonesome dove that's what the horse in lonesome dove was and i said have you ever seen lonesome dove and they're like uh-uh i said there's a gray horse in lonesome dove but it's a mare, and her name is Hell Inappropriate. <laughs> way. Female dog. Would, would and that mare would bite and kick and was horrid. I'm like, somebody kind of played a joke on you. Yeah. Because that was the, the horse. Like, they went to try him out. He bucked the girl off and ran away and stood in the corner. And they're like, we'll take him. Uh, and so we call him the gray horse. The, the gray horse. The gray horse. The gray horse. So, um, and it just fit him. We were going to change his name when he became my horse. Again. It's just like I, he'd been Gray Horse forever, and he's just that is that horse. So he does everything. He looks very cool. Uh, he can rope a cow, work a cow, uh, ride bareback and brideless, pee off, do tempi lead changes, you, you name it. He kind of does it all. He's so he's cool. a million dollar horse. He is. And how we <laughs> pee all the time. It's like the conversation starts at you know whatever one hundred and fifty thousand, and the answer will still be no. Um, he just, I'll be riding that horse in heaven. So because he's just that good. <laughs> he's just that good. <laughs> and so now this is one of my next um, pair babies, uh, the little baby. So that is a lovely pair baby. We have uh, a full brother that I was gave him his fourth ride today, Rubicon. And so if you don't know, Rubicon is the name of a trail, but it's also a model of Jeep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. That's right. It and is. So it's a gonna, nice model of Jeep. It is. And so <laughs> this is going to be Willie for uh, the Willie's Jeep model. My mm. wife decided that was a fun name and I agreed. So uh, this is the one of the next pair babies that he was just what boys, a cutie. four days old. <gasps> I just was there a day before yesterday in Indiana uh, and took these pictures. So he is adorable. It's very exciting. And that's just a project that I've been, it, you know, it takes years to grow these babies and have them going. So his, the brother Rubicon is two and you know he's got four rides spread out over the last six months so it's like he's not being ridden hard or frequent we're just lightly getting him going and do it a bit more with them when they're three and mm -hmm. then really kind of get going when they're three and a half four and so 
That's what I did with the Mustang. He very lightly got ridden just a few times, it, you it, know, and then yeah, takes, slowly work him in. It takes time. And so to have have that program built, it's been, you know, this has been a five-year process of getting these horses grown where we have. And so um, we have some models for sale. So if you know anybody horse shopping, we got some real nice ones. And they've been, again, it, we've overseen this whole process of bringing them up and giving them that exposure. That's wonderful. So, and then there's my fancy new saddle. That's very nice. This is made for me uh, from a guy in Colorado. So It looks comfy. It's wonderful. It's a bit squeaky, but it's brand new. And uh, so we've been working the, riding the squeaks out of it. So that, um, I just, he literally shipped it to me in Michigan. So I drove up there. It arrived. I was able to then use it um, for my clinic tour here. How nice. So it's already... <laughs> been from michigan to california and oh back gosh. again so nice that's pretty too good time very pretty yes <laughs> that was the sign that we only have a minute left which means we have about 30 seconds so jake is going to be back with us for another segment we're going to chat some more about some of his travels and clinics and got a few questions about timid horse i'd like to ask him some advice on so stay with us on the horse talk show and jake and i will be back in a minute Current equine microchips can migrate by up to 30%, causing difficulty when scanning. With over 70 years of collective horse industry experience, Lipchip offers a new, more effective method of microchipping, partnering with veterinarians and technology experts to ensure humane and practical microchipping. Lipchip was built by horsemen for horsemen. Nowadays, the performance horse industry is in need of both integrity and transparency. Lipchip is the future of horse microchipping, with cutting edge technology functional for every discipline. Find Lipchip on social media and for more information, lipchipllc.com. The future is here. The future is Lipchip. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to feeddac.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. World-class equine rehab promoting faster recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy and underwater treadmill, a saltwater spa, an aquapesa, magna wave, a vibration plate, swimming pool, massage and laser therapies. With post-surgical care, memberships, packages and BOGOs, EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. After a terrible vehicle wreck in 2021, breaking my neck from the impact and severely injuring my knee, I was no stranger to PTSD and my huge ugly scar was a constant reminder. Nilam Patel at Nirvana Medical Spa treated my knee with the secret RF, delivering radio frequency energy to all layers of my skin to improve scars and skin quality an easy, safe, effective procedure to revitalize and regenerate the tissue for optimal results. Adding PRP enhanced the procedure. Thank you, Neelam and the team at Nirvana Medical Spa for a better, brighter and much happier me. The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa, and our television broadcast sponsor. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? Well, listen to this. <laughs> With your host, Louisa Barton. What does it feel like to be in love with a horse? Presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Back in the saddle again. Now, here's your 
your pretty, pretty Luisa Barton. You're fab. You're switched on. You're a bit of all right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Back on the second half of the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Louisa Barton here in the CEP studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital of the world. Got Jake Birnbaum back with us. Hasn't been on the show for a while. Been enjoying chatting to him a little bit from Pear Tree Ranch. I remember when I said farm once. Farms are for vegetables, ranches are for cows. There you go. That's exactly what you said. That's right. So um, let's talk a little bit about training. And we've got some really cool videos. If you're joining us either on Facebook or Equus Television, you'll be able to see these as we're talking. Um, We're going to be showing you a little bit of cool stuff. But if you're watching, this is really neat. So this is... I've seen this, yes. We've been talking about the pear baby. So this is the pear baby that's kind of ready to go. Uh, his name is Drift, and he is four. And so we, I started doing for YouTube a fun segment called Cowboy Art. And I, I had the idea, and I've teased about, um, you know, I grew up in Michigan, and so you, as a boy, you learn to write your name in the snow. And, <laughs> uh, when teaching clinics and stuff, and getting horses where they're confident and yielding, and being able to do a job. Um, dragging an obstacle is a great way to do that, and to kind of prove my points, like you need to have your spatial awareness of what you're doing and your horse ought to be handy enough to be able to write your name in the arena. So we put the drones up and uh, I wrote my name in the arena. So this was the first one we did, but we've done a few more. You can find those, you go to YouTube and search Pear Tree Ranch, you can find the other cowboy art segments. And so we did one where I drew a sun and a pine tree and a mountain, snowy capped mountain. For so you're an artist as well. Mm-hmm. Getting ready to go to California to the mountains. And then I drew um, a nice flower for the cowboy art number three. So we've been having some fun with things like this. And so, again, teaching that confidence and yielding, having those horses where they understand when pressure is on and when pressure is um not on it's just what's happening that really helps them have confidence it helps them have relaxation and they can understand what's expected of them and then you kind of put it to the test when you get out there and get doing a job and it'll either prove you're right or prove you wrong (laughs) right So talk to us a little bit while, while these are airing about timid horses and about how you, how you deal with a horse, whether it's a young horse or it's, even if it's an older horse and it's a timid horse. It's and not necessarily a horse that just wants to do the wrong thing, but just a horse that's easily spooked um, and, and takes a lot longer to build confidence. What are some of the things that you do on the ground? Let's talk about maybe the first time you go to fly spray it and it jumps backwards what what is that either it hasn't been fly sprayed or it's had a bad experience with a fly spray situation and it just gets spooked very easily either by sound or by motion so there's two ways that we can that i teach about that we can train confidence right and so we're going to talk about um, teaching confidence and the technique that we use when training confidence is approach and retreat so um, I really like my nice piranha fly spray that I don't want to waste spraying for an hour <laughs> getting a horse confident. So I might put water in a spray bottle and you kind of shake it a little over here away from the horse and then you stop shaking and let them get their nose maybe by it and then you take it away. That's the approach and retreat. Okay, That's a technique we can use to teach confidence. Then you spray, shake it a little more, and you approach while you're shaking it, let them get maybe their nose on it and then you take it away. You do this dance of approach and retreat. And Good so idea we, on the water. I never heard that before, yes. but what a smart tip that is. See, that's like pre-thinking the whole, why do you want to waste your fly spray exactly. on this demonstration exactly. when you're working? Exactly. Yes. Very okay. good tip. <laughs> so we have that way we can teach. Now, there's also another way we can do it, and that's called exposure. Okay, And this is an important thing to think about because, um, you know, say the neighbors like shooting as a fun thing. If they decide Imagine to that. do their shooting <laughs> practice, right as you're about to fork your leg over, pow, and it spooks your horse. And pow, that's not so fun. So you need to get your horses used to things and you can expose them to it. And so that might be where I would take my bottle of water 
and I would take my horse and I'd go for a walk. And I'd want a nice long lead rope. You know, a 12 foot lead rope is a nice handy training rope. And I'm gonna walk and if they need to drift, I'm gonna get all the way to the end of that rope. And I'm gonna just shake it and shake it all around and get busy and spray, 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 and just kind of water. Man, this, this grass needs a little water. And I'm gonna spray my arena, I'm gonna spray the grass and just get that horse following me and expose them to this, this spraying. Cause there's three things that scare horses, sight, sound, and feel. Mm -hmm. So the sight of you shaking and doing all this stuff, what the heck is wrong with mm -hmm. you? The sound <laughs> as you're <laughs> squirting a bottle, okay? And then the feel of the water hitting them. Right. So we can expose them to the sight and the sound, okay? And then we can expose them to the feel of the water. And so it's like you start spraying the water under their feet and next thing you know, you're zip, 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 squirting their legs and they might be jumping around snorting and you just kind of allow this to happen. Maybe set yourself up in a safe space, like a round pen where they can kind of jump around and you just spray over here and then spray over there. So no matter where they go, they're kind of getting sprayed, mm -hmm. but you're not trying to take it right at them. You're not them. right at them, aggressively, okay. right? You're spraying around there. And now we know we need to do a kind voice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I want you to experiment on Baconator with voices today, okay? And so as you do that, now they've been exposed, and pretty quick they start realizing this is just happening. They get over the startle of the sound, sight uh, of you with this thing that you're coming at them with, the sound that it makes, and the feel of that water um, or substance hitting them and so once they've kind of been exposed to that long enough pretty quick they're just like this is silly i'm gonna just stand here I'm just gonna stand and here right now you maybe get the piranha out and you and they they've been prepared okay through you can do the confidence training but also then exposure and so um, those are the kind of two main techniques and the difference in how i would apply them when it comes to training confidence with something like fly spray. And I'm gonna do the same thing when it's bath time. I'm gonna get me a 100 foot hose and water my arena and it just happened to start spraying. Mm -hmm. You know, we, my young horse, we saw the picture of her Rosie. Uh, first day I ever did bathing um, prep with her, I did in the round pen. The second day I ever did bathing with her, she had hooked a nail or something on the fence and cut her face wide open. It's like, now you have to spray her. Mm -hmm. Guess what? She stood there like a little angel. Mm -hmm. She was a yearling and I'm spraying this hose right up in her face. You know, she just stood there like nothing because we had done our homework the day before, right? right. Don't wait till it's late. Right. Like we talked about with yes, the horse with the horse trailer, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. and so same idea. So because we did that homework, it, it did. And again, we exposed her by watering the arena. Next thing you know, she's running around and she just runs through the water and I just kind of stand there and spray. She kind of pretty quick figures out, oh, that feels good. So that would be an idea about training confidence. Yes. So then when you've exposed your horse to a lot of things, you can do a job. So this video that you're seeing is episode two of my series, Pear Tree Ranching. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of my vlog that I've started doing. So it follows me along my different adventures. And this spring we um, doctored the cattle. So we got there feet done and we trim their horns. I have horned cattle and so you get to keep those horns tipped so they're not poking each other or poking a horse and it keeps everybody safe. So this was a fun exciting day of uh, purpose and so that was one of the mama cows that we did there and this moment right here my good buddy Ryan Rose uh, ropes the bull and he's a big big boy there the the gray bull you see mm -hmm. josh his name is josh mm -hmm. and uh, this was a fun kind of that is fun principles to purpose confidence and yielding now let's go do a job so you can follow pear tree ranching uh on our pear tree ranch youtube and you know also on facebook and the web and everywhere else you can find pear tree right. ranch we're there and you're going to be gone for a bit i'll be home for Four weeks now and then back on the road. Then back on the road. Jake, thank you so much for coming in and joining us. You know, I always love having you on the show. It's always such a pleasure. We have a couple of segments coming up with Steve Haskin. going to talk a little bit about the Belmont. Steve Haskin's our Hall of Famer that likes to tell us uh, what do you think might happen in the big race this coming weekend in the third leg of the Triple Crown races. Jake, thanks again for thank being you. with us. Enjoy uh, the rest of this with Steve. Thank you to our presenting sponsors of this half of the show, Palm Chevrolet and Larson Hay. Also, thank you to our supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, Equine Performance in Innovative Center, and Summit Joint Performance. 
This hour of the Horse Talk Show is presented by Palm Chevrolet in Ocala, where the entire team is committed to making your experience in sales and service hassle-free and easier than ever with no games or gimmicks. Come in and visit on Southwest College Road or online at palmchevrolet.com. A second-to-none experience with all the amenities. Palm Chevy, find new roads. Nirvana, Ocala's premier medical spa, is leading the way in great skin with all the newest in treatment options, offering prejuvenation for younger clients and rejuvenation for all ages. Nirvana knows you want to look your very best, but we've all seen people with the telltale signs of too much work. We want you to look like you, just better, brighter and younger, with all the newest and best in technology and all in the most beautiful surroundings. Like Nirvana Medical Spa on Facebook and find them on the web at nirvanamedicalspa.com. Become a better, brighter and younger you. Piranha, your trusted leader in insect control for 50 years. The official fly spray for World Equestrian Center. From the strongest water-based equine spray in the blue bottle to the familiar and longtime favorite in the yellow bottle. Wipe and spray, we've got you covered. If you're looking for effective plant-based fly spray, then look for our zero bite in the green bottle. Check us out online at piranhainc.com. That's P-Y-R-A-N-H-A, piranhainc.com, to learn more about Piranha's entire family of products. Piranha, it works. My name is Dr. Natalie Solomon. I formulated Equigreen with cutting edge science and technology alongside the passion that is represented by a lifelong love of horses. I created a product that I would trust for my horses because they deserve nothing but the best for their bodies. Horses rely on us to take care of them, to love them, to respect them. This is how Equigreen came to life. Equigreen, CBD for your horse that you can trust. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Louisa Barton here in the studio in the horse capital of the world, downtown Ocala in the CEP studios. Joining me by phone, my favorite guest, Steve Haskin, our Hall of Fame turf writer. We love having him on the show. Uh, I saw today on secretariat.com where he writes... They said his timeless narrative. I said that is so perfect for him because his narrative is timeless indeed and always entertaining. <laughs> who, said, who, who said that? That's what Secretariat.com has on there about you. Oh, I must have paid somebody to say that. <laughs> well, your narrative is timeless and your stories, it doesn't matter how many years you go back to talk about horses in history from the racetrack, the stories are always edutainment at its best educational and entertaining at the same time and that's why i love them so much you usually oh, can you. You, my, you? My, my, my latest one the, the one i have up now is has, has to test the patience of everybody because it's almost it's four thousand words <laughs> yeah but, but you so got long. the wonderful silver charm in it and we love silver charm oh you read so that okay, okay. i so did you, so you, you you made it all the way through huh? i did i did oh, i always read you. You, Thank you. listen yours are the best and if i don't laugh and cry during reading something by you i'm surprised and they say the movies that are best movies in the world are the ones that you can laugh and cry at the movie and you're usually I, you manage to get a tear jerk and you manage to get a giggle out of me so that's good <laughs> Wow, I gotta get a transcript of this show. <laughs> Gigi, <laughs> Steve wants a transcript. <laughs> so one of my favorite times of year, of course, is Derby time, and that's because I get Steve Haskin to talk Derby to me on the show. But we got through the Derby, and it was a very exciting one this year with an eighty to one horse that popped in at the very last minute there, I think thirty seconds before the deadline to be in the Derby. He was, uh, he was in the spot of the 21st horse, and as D. Wayne Lucas scratched his ethereal road, um, Rich Strike jumped right into that spot. And several weeks before that, April Mayberry of Mayberry Farm here in Marion County sent me a little comment on Facebook to say, if Rich Strike gets in, watch out, he could win it. 
and then he did. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I so would have cool. used, used that in my story. <laughs> it's a cool little, um, by the way, that story was amazing that you wrote. I, well, I well, sent it to I everybody. I sent it because of you. I would never, I would never have written it if you hadn't given me those contacts. Okay, I want a transcript of this show too. <laughs> <laughs> so I help you, you help me. It's a great deal. I love it. Um, but I, I think that was such a great story and so yeah. well written. Every time, excuse me, every time, any time a Triple Crown race now, I root, I root for any horse with a Florida connection. <laughs> so you and can get a good I know, story. I, I, know, I know if they win, I'll have a story. <laughs> And you have everybody's phone number in Florida, so you're right. You're right. And you know, you know I have I another. Mean, I have another funny little message actually from Niall Brennan when um, early voting. We thought early voting was going to be in the Kentucky Derby, and then he wasn't, and they moved right. him to the Preakness instead. And I text Niall. I said, "Is early voting out of the Derby?" He said, "Yeah, yeah. He's saving him to be a fresh horse in the Preakness because that's his distance, and he'll win it." <laughs> And then he won it. Everybody who's touting you is uh, touting you on a winner. (laughs) I know, right? Yeah, so it's always good stuff, you know. know, It's. it's... I didn't didn't write that much about. You know, I didn't write too much about the Preakness, but I know. I know Niall. If I if I knew he had broken him, I would have. I certainly would have called him. Yeah, he's a. um, I should. I I should remember to text you these things. What's the matter with me? Oh, I know. know, I'm moving. I know you give me Eric Reed's uh, daughter, uh, so yeah, she's wonderful, isn't she, Lindsay? She well, she's the thing fantastic. is, I, I, I sent her a few things. So there was a few other follow-up stories I wanted to do, and I sent her like a bunch of uh, Facebook messages, and she never answered any of them. Oh, I'm gonna send her a yeah, text. Yeah, you know, I, I <laughs> wanted to do a story. I wanted to do a story on 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 uh, Rich Strike's veterinarian. Oh, really? Uh, Alan Dorton. And oh. like he's been a, well, almost like a second father to her, and um, I wanted to f- f- see what it was like working with the horse and getting his. So I was going to do it, but um, I had I had um, I had sent her a I sent her um, a messages one after another, and she didn't answer any of them. So I just forgot about it. Oh. If he wins, I might go. I, I might try directly with him because he's on Facebook. But yes. I was I was hoping to talk to her. or... You know, it is um, possible. I don't know if you're friends with Lindsay Reed on Facebook, but if you're not friends with her, um, sometimes what happens is I've had this actually happen to me. I've had the messages go into junk before on Facebook. And then when I became friends with the person on Facebook, all those messages bounced in and they were like two. Some of them were two years old and I've actually had that happen. So you might try. Really? And, yeah, you might try and shoot her a text. They may have gone into her spam mail and and she might not be getting them, and I'll text her after too, and and tell her that you yeah, were reaching I thought, out. Yeah, I thought maybe she was. I, I thought maybe she didn't like what I wrote or something. Oh or no, <laughs> no, I, nobody could not like anything you write ever, Steve. Ever, ever, ever. That's never happened. So, yeah. um, well, yeah. you know, no, a lot of times you send a message to somebody, they don't answer. Maybe, maybe they just didn't get it or so. But I sent several. She didn't answer any of them. So yeah, so it may have gone into a spam. That's probably what happened. But I'll shoot her a text after and say, "Hey, Steve wants to do another story," and I and I guarantee you she'll reach out. Um, so what do you think? Speaking of good old Richie and his amazing run into the history books on Derby Day, what do you think about him in the Belmont? Well, you know, normally you think a horse with his running style is not really conducive to the Belmont. Uh, it's more of a speed-oriented race, even though it's a mile and a half. But I've, you know, I've been watching his workouts at Churchill Downs, and his and his, they were brilliant. I mean, mm-hmm. they were fast. He did it easily. I'm just wondering if he's just not getting good right now. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's a lot closer to the pace. You know, in a much small, you know, he got an eight horse field compared to a 20 horse field. A lot of horses don't run their race in the Derby. Horses that normally would be running third or fourth or fifth in a race are running 14th. Mm-hmm. So, so I think that uh, he might be closer to the pace, but it, it just, listen, he was 80 to 1 based on what he did on synthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and we really don't know how good he is i mean he just could be getting very good right now it wouldn't surprise me if he if he if he won again even though the like i said the race is not set up for him we've got one 
speed horse in the race, and nobody who looks like they're going to be anywhere near him. And that's we the people who won the Peter Pan wire to wire, you know, by 10 lengths. 10 and three quarter lengths, that's right. Yeah. That was a heck and, of a race. <laughs> and not only that, not only was he only speeding the race, but he drew the rail and he won the Peter Pan in the mud and it's supposed to rain on Saturday in New York. So, <laughs> and, and, and not only that, but Bobby Flay bought into the horse this week. And the last time he bought into a Windstar horse for the Belmont Stakes, it was Creator. And he won. That's so, right. uh, so, so he might, it looks like he's got a good chance of lucking into another Belmont winner because this horse is going to have the whole race to himself. I, I mean, there's nobody that looks like he's going to be within five lengths of him. And if he gets out there, firstly, from the rail and on an off, uh, off track, I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody's going to be able to catch him. I'm not sure. Uh, it, you know, it all depends. You, you can't predict it at a mile and a half, even though. Listen, most of Belmont winners now are uh, are horses that are on the lead or close to the pace. Let's put it that way. That's true. Steve, hold that yeah. thought. We have to just run to break here real quick, and we're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about Barber Road and especially Nest. So stay with us on the Horse Talk Show. We'll be right back with our Hall of Famer in just a minute. Thank you to our presenting sponsors of this half of the show, Palm Chevrolet and Larson Hay. Also, thank you to our supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, Equine Performance in Innovative Center, and Summit Joint Performance. Hi, I'm Alan Davies with Equine Therapy International. Today, we're at Engineered Equine Performance, celebrating the new saltwater chilled treadmill. This particular chilled equine saltwater treadmill is a game changer. As you can see, the finest materials are used, the filtration system, coarse, fine filtration, no chemicals. We use UV, ozone, combination of filtration to keep the highest water chemistry standards. Being a saltwater unit, only the finest stainless steel and materials are used. That's important when it comes to longevity and cost of service over the life of the unit. This unit also has integrated massage jets with fine bubbles and coarse air bubbles for the therapy. The control system on this is Siemens industrial grade, top of the line technology, straight from Germany, but also serviceable here in the US. World-class equine rehab promoting faster recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy and underwater treadmill, a saltwater spa, an aquapacer, magna wave, a vibration plate, swimming pool, massage and laser therapies. With post-surgical care, memberships, packages and BOGOs, EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. This show was brought to you in part by TT Distributors, dedicated to bringing their customers the largest selection of quality horse supplements, products, and farrier supplies in Florida at affordable prices. Also online at ttdistributors.com. This show is brought to you in part by Summit Joint Performance, promoting a healthy, thick synovial fluid, decreasing inflammation in the joints and improving the cushioning properties of the cartilage pads. All age horses can benefit from Summit Joint Performance. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the Horse Talk Show, final segment for this week with Steve Haskin, our Hall of Fame turf writer, and we're chatting a little bit about the Belmont. Thank you to Palm Chevrolet and Larson Hay for supporting this coverage. We're very excited, of course, always about the Ocala Marion County connections, and there's usually many. Um, we've talked a little bit about Rich Strike, and of course, uh, we the people, I've got to find a connection back to Marion County for we the people yet. Uh, Mo Donegal, certainly a very popular horse for this race as well. What are your thoughts on Mo Donegal, Steve? Well, I think Mo Donegal, everybody looks at him as a come from behind horse who, um, who might be at a disadvantage, but I think he has, I think he has much more tactical speed than people think. Um, he should, he should get the mile and a half. I'm not saying he, I love his had a great amount and a half, but it's certainly good enough for him to win at a mile and a half. You know, you, you normally you don't look at Uncle Mo's as mile and a half horses, but listen, Uncle Mo's can do a lot of things that uh, that you don't think they can. 
So it's not going to surprise me. He's you know he's already signed the Derby winner. So right. I think Mo Donegal's got the right running style, and I think I think he's, I think he's got a good shot. He's gonna, he's going to be fresh in there. And I you know I thought he I thought he ran a very good race in the Derby. You know he was he was, he was coming. He had a rough trip and he was coming on late. Right. So he's, you know he's you know he's, he's got a shot. But all these horses that we mentioned, Mo Donegal and Rich Strike. They're going to have to be closer to the pace. Right. I know it's only eight horses, but if they're running eighth, 15 lengths back, <laughs> right. it'll be really tough. It's you know what I mean? Tough. So, yes. so you know, if if we the people uh, decide to slow the pace down, some of these horses should just move up. Again, I don't know if they're going to have the same closing punch running closer to the pace, but they have no choice. They have now, to and just hope that we the people, you know, come back, comes back, but... Listen, he's bred to go a distance too. What are your thoughts about um, Todd Pletcher having Nest in there? Uh, Todd has had a uh, a Philly win, um, right? Um, well, I did I did a column comparing Nest yes. to uh, Rags, to, Rags riches. to Riches. There you go. See, I knew that I got that from you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, you know, Nest Sire is curling, right? You know, and. <laughs> Rags to Riches would just be curling in a photo, so it's interesting a uh, little uh, comeback for a uh, curl in here. But mm -hmm. you know, just a couple of things I'd mentioned was that uh, you know, Curlin is out of a deputy minister mayor, and Rags to Riches is out of a deputy minister mayor. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Nest has uh, secretary in Seattle Slew in the third and fourth generations, and mm -hmm. Rags to Riches has. Uh, uh, Secretariat and Seattle Slew in, his, in her second and third generation. You know, Nest is out of an AP Indy mayor, AP Indy, which right. is by AP Indy. Right. I mean, I, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot more. You know, besides that, but looking back at the horses they traced to, they both traced to Alibi. Um, one through a uh, um, a horse that won two legs of the Triple Crown, and the other by a horse who won two legs of the Handicap Triple Crown. <laughs> But, so she uh, she could outlast the boys. <laughs> I think Ness is a very good filly. I think she's going to love a mile and a half. She certainly bred for it, and I I, I got a feeling she you know she had a rough trip in the um, in the Kentucky Oaks. She did, but I think I think she had some t t some tactical speed. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Pletcher has her fairly close up, at least to put some kind of pressure on we the people. And if it doesn't work out, it might set it up for Mo Donegal. You know, it'll serve, serve two purposes there. But I, th I think she's kind of dangerous in here, actually. Yeah, yeah, you may be right. Last one I want to mention is Barber Road because there is an Ocala Marion County connection and the family mm -hmm. are lovely people. Um, they tr started the horse here in Ocala. Their son trains at the track for them. Barber Road was kind of feisty after the Derby. Didn't even seem tired in his stall. Kind of looked like he was ready to go again. What do you think his chances are? <laughs> Basically the same as Mo Donegal <laughs> and Rich Strike. And we're talking all come from behind horses. Yeah. Uh, so again, they're gonna have they're gonna have to get l lucky and get a pace where they can move up a little bit, be within striking distance. Now Barber Road is a confirmed stretch runner. Mm -hmm. Whether he's going to be have that same closing punch, if they move him up closer to the pace, is hard to tell. But listen, he's a consistent. He's consistent, and maybe the mile and a half is what he needs to, you know, put the finishing touches on what he's been unable to finish. Um, if you look at all his races, he just comes too late. He man, he gets into a little bit of trouble. He just needs to learn how to win, and time <laughs> is time is his move correctly that's right that's you know right. actually he doesn't have to the jockey has to the do jockey it, has to you know? right and yes. the jockey has to do it but you know he can't he can't be five or six lengths back at the quarter pole and expect to win the belmont so right if they're going to make a move with him if they're going to keep him back they're going to have to make an early move and that's to make a move on the far turn because there's a big sweeping turn you got a lot of room on there to make a big move yes but you have but at Belmont Park, you have to sustain it. It's, yes. Sometimes it's hard because that big turn at Belmont takes a lot out of a horse if you have to make a big move on it because it goes on and on. It does. I call I, 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 I call it the turn of no return. <laughs> the turn of no return, yes. You know, I mean, I, you, you, a lot of times at Belmont, you see horses, 
you know, make these big, big sweeping moves on there. And, and you know, they go from eight to seven to six, five, five four, thirty-two, and that, then they don't go any farther. Yeah. And you can't go wide into that turn. No. Because that, that, that's why I said the turn of no return. If you go three, four wide into that turn and you get stuck on that turn, I don't care how well you're moving on it, you're not going to be able to sustain that run. That's right. That's uh, that track, Big Sandy. Wow, that's a, that's a heck of a run, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see it, Steve. And um, if you want to uh, read all of Steve's amazing, timeless narratives, you only have to go to secretariat.com, and I'm telling you, you will be more than entertained. You'll be educated, and uh, it doesn't get much better than that, making him my very, very favorite guest on the show because uh, we always get great facts and information from it. It's always entertaining. Steve, it's been a pleasure well, as always. Thank you. Uh, so who do you think is going to win? <laughs> uh, like I said, it, it, it looks so obvious for we the people, but you know, if I, if, you know, I think, listen, the thing with, the thing with Rich Strike, I would, I, I, I would pick him, okay? And I, let's say I would. From a betting standpoint, though, you know, he's listed at 7-2 to two in the morning line. Now, here's a horse that was 80-1. to one. <laughs> And you know the expression, you know the, the old expression, which, I, you know, the old handicappers expression, if you missed a wedding, don't go to the funeral. <laughs> you know, if, if you didn't have him at 80-1, to one, why do you want him at 7-2? to two? <laughs> Right, right. Well, I like to see him, Barber Road, and Nest be the first three because that's two boys that I know connected here to Ocala, Marion County, and then the girl, I'd love to just see her beat some boys. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to see him win. Uh, yeah, I'd still like to do that story on, uh, on, on Alan Dorton, the veterinarian. Well, um, I'm going to chase so Lindsay Reed up if, if right you, after uh, this. Yeah, if you, if you ever talk to uh, I will. Lindsay, ask her you know, what the deal is. <laughs> I'll send her a text. Thank you, Steve Haskin, Hall of Thank Fame, you. turf writer. Lovely to have you with us. Well, and any time, great Thank talking you. to you. Bye-bye. Steve Haskin, he's the best. Uh, always love to chat to him about the Belmont. Be keeping uh, an eye on those Ocala connections uh, this coming weekend. It's going to be a very exciting race, I'm sure, there at Belmont Park. The toughest race of all for these horses who've never ran a mile and a half and might never run a mile and a half again in their race career. Uh, very, very tough, deep, deep, sandy racetrack with that big turn that Steve was talking about. So we'll be rooting for those Ocala connections. Wish them all the best of luck and a very safe trip. Whether you're in Ocala, Marion County, the horse capital of the world or not, happy horsing around till the same time next week. <laughs>